proposal of Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin to change the Senate rules and bypass that Senate filibuster has rendered the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Voting Act dead on arrival. Joining me now, Representative Chuck Fleischman of Tennessee and Representative Pete Sessions of Texas. Congressman, thank you for being with us. Let's start with this stunning speech that we heard from Kirsten Sinema on the Senate floor saying she will not support changing the filibuster and pushing this through with a narrow majority. Eliminating the 60 vote threshold will simply guarantee that we lose a critical tool that we need to safeguard our democracy from threats in the years to come. It is clear that the two party strategies are not working, not for either side and especially not for the country. Congressman Fleischman, she makes the bold point of asking the bigger question here, which is what happened to bipartisanship? What did you take away from her speech? Well, I thought it was a historic speech and a very statesmanlike speech, and I think she's correct. Let me say this. Historically and constitutionally, the Senate was designed by our founding fathers to be a buffer against spurious quick action by my chamber, the House, which unfortunately Nancy Pelosi has been spurious and she has been radical left, um, and the Biden administration is just totally out of control. So the United States Senate is that great shock absorber to call timeouts. And if you recall, constitutionally, originally, the Senate was not popularly elected. We properly ad, uh, amended our Constitution last century to allow that. If we are going to have the Senate continue to do its job as a buffer against quick, radical action, we need to retain the filibuster. In a, in a word, she's correct. And Congressman Sessions, what's the biggest issue that Republicans have with this proposed legislation on voting? Is it possible for Republicans to reach any sort of a compromise, or is it just too far to the left at this point? Well, the, there is no compromise position. It's intended, as the president has said, to have one party rule in this country. That one party rule would be completely out of Washington, D.C. All campaigns would be federally funded by the federal government directly to people running for a federal office. Over $8 billion is the price tag that's put on it originally. It is meant to deceive the voter, it is meant to overwhelm the voter, and it's meant to give one party control to the Democratic Party. And this is a danger for someone who believes in having not just a bipartisanship, but a constitutional government where people work together. They want one party rule, they want this, and they're willing to spend at any resource what disturbs me most is the way the president, the attorney general, and the vice president have gone about selling this against the Republican Party, against people who stand up for this country and made this country also the great country that it is. And to suggest that only one party would have that opportunity for the future tells us how corrupt and bad this Democratic leadership is. Yeah, we especially saw that on the anniversary of the January 6th Capitol breach. Uh, multiple times, Democrats continued to say that this was essential for saving the nation's democracy. Uh, Congressman Fleischman, I want to get your opinion on some breaking news that we've been tracking this morning. Twitter has recently suspended an account uh, reportedly linked to Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. The Twitter account has often posted excerpts from Khamenei's speeches and other official content from the country's leader. That suspension actually coming days after the account posted a video which seemed to threaten the assassination of former President Donald Trump. That video shows drones over Trump's Mar-a-Lago compound as the former president is portrayed to be playing golf. Agents are shown hacking into his security and attacking him with a caption translated in Farsi, Revenge is definite. Your reaction? Well, for a long time, Iran has been the worst actor in the Middle East. State-sponsored terrorism with Hamas and Hezbollah against 
not only the United States, but our dear ally Israel. And that's why I think it's so important that we continue to support Israel. But we must be loud and clear uh, in our denunciation of this activity by Iran. And this cannot just be the United States. It needs to be the entire international community. It's long overdue. The world needs to stand up and say no to the radical Islamic actions of um, of Iran and their state-sponsored terrorism. This is just one piece of a very dangerous puzzle. It needs to be condemned outright. Congressman Sessions, I want to get a quick follow-up from you on that. Uh, do you see any irony with the fact that the president, uh, former President Trump's Twitter account was banned so quickly, yet there has been you know, endless content on this from this linked account, and yet Twitter has only now taken action? Well, of course, we understand what, what their mission is about. We understood for the entire four years that President Trump was in office. We also understood that our deepest adversaries at the time, that included the Taliban, have open access to this network. What I want to say to you is we still count on people like Newsmax. We count on the Republican Party, our young leaders, like Governor Youngkin, like the great Chuck Fleischman, who's on today, to have access to give meaningful dialogue with the American people about balance and the direction this country should go with predictable outcomes. Chuck Fleischman and Governor, Governor Yunkin are the kinds of voices that America deeply needs of a balance to keep this country the greatest in the world and to aim for a better future. My Republican Party has balance, and we have the ability, as we move forward, to take these challenges on, to move to the majority, and to take on these socialists like the president and his agenda. And we intend to do that with this election this year. Well, Congressman Fleischman and Congressman Sessions, we really appreciate you being with us, and thank you for that sentiment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.